In this My Mastery lesson, we will discuss acute diverticulitis. So what is diverticulitis? Diverticulitis is defined as inflammation of a diverticulum, which is a sac-like protrusion of the colonic wall. The presence of diverticula is referred to as diverticulosis, and the inflammatory disease developed by some of these patients is called diverticulitis. The term acute diverticulitis generally applies to disease of the large intestines. In terms of diverticulosis, Western and industrialized nations have prevalence rates that range from 5 to 45 percent. The prevalence of diverticulosis is age-dependent, increasing from less than 20 percent at age 40 to 60 percent by age 60. Diverticulitis is present in up to 15 percent of diverticulosis patients. Men and women are generally equally affected. The sigmoid colon is the most common location for diverticulitis. The underlying cause of diverticulitis is micro or macroscopic perforation of a diverticulum. The primary process is thought to be erosion of the diverticular wall by increased intraluminal pressure or insipated food particles. Inflammation and focal necrosis ensue, resulting in perforation. High dietary intake of red meat low dietary fiber, lack of vigorous exercise, high BMI greater than 25, and smoking were all independently associated with an increased risk of diverticulitis. Approximately 25% of patients with acute diverticulitis have associated acute or chronic complications. These include abscess formation in about 17% of patients, colonic obstruction, fistula to nearby structures, such as the small bowel, and perforation, which occurs in 1-2% to of patients. Let's look at the common signs and symptoms of diverticulitis. Abdominal pain is the most common complaint associated with diverticulitis and is usually in the left lower quadrant. Nausea and vomiting occurs in 20-62% to of patients. A tender mass is palpable in approximately 20% of patients due to pericolonic inflammation or peridiverticular abscess. Patients may also present with fever. Acute diverticulitis may be associated with a change in bowel habits, with constipation reported in approximately 50% of patients and diarrhea in 25-35% to of patients. Patients may also present with urinary urgency, frequency, or dysuria due to irritation of the bladder from an inflamed sigmoid colon. This is seen in 10-15% to 15% of patients. Now let's discuss the workup. On observation, the patient can range from appearing normal in asymptomatic disease to ill-appearing, especially in disease complicated by obstruction, bleeding, or perforation. Dehydration may be present in an obstructed patient who has had profound nausea and vomiting. These patients may have dry mucous membranes, reduced skin turgor, and sunken eyes, and overall appear ill. On inspection, distension may be noted in an obstructed patient. On palpation, the patient may have left lower quadrant pain and a tender mass may be present. Patients may also have right lower quadrant or suprapubic pain due to the presence of a redundant inflamed sigmoid colon or right-sided cecal diverticulitis. Patients may have localized peritoneal signs with localized guarding, rigidity, and rebound tenderness. A digital rectal exam should be performed. It may reveal a mass or tenderness to palpation in the presence of a distal sigmoid abscess. So what might you expect to see in the lab results? A complete blood count with differential can be obtained. It may show a leukocytosis with a left shift, which may indicate the presence of bowel complications. However, the white count may be normal in up to 45% of patients. Patients may also have an elevated C-reactive protein on lab work. A urinalysis can be obtained. It may reveal sterile pyuria, white blood cells in the urine, due to inflammation from the sigmoid colon. Now let's discuss diagnostic imaging. Computed tomography, CT scan, is an excellent imaging modality for patients with acute diverticulitis. 
It is commonly performed for the evaluation of an adult with abdominal pain presenting to an emergency department. If tolerated, an IV and oral contrasted CT scan can provide valuable information and help for the evaluation of complications. Computer tomography findings suggestive of acute diverticulitis include the presence of localized bowel wall thickening greater than 4 millimeters and an increase in soft tissue density within the pericolonic fat secondary to inflammation or fat stranding and the presence of colonic diverticula with inflammatory changes, like that seen in this axial CT slice. MRI can also be used and has the advantage of less radiation. However, it is not first line and not as readily available as CT. Ultrasound can also be performed. It has the advantage that it is widely available, inexpensive, and avoids radiation exposure. However, abdominal ultrasound is operator-dependent and cannot exclude other causes of abdominal pain. Ultrasound features suggestive of acute diverticulitis include diverticula, which are characterized as bright bowel outpouchings, a hypoechoic peridiverticular inflammatory reaction, and bowel wall thickening greater than 4 millimeters. Organized collections suggestive of abscess formation with or without gas bubbles may also be seen in some cases. Let's discuss the treatment options. Patients with acute diverticulitis should receive inpatient treatment if their CT scan shows complicated diverticulitis defined by the presence of frank perforation, abscess, obstruction, or fistulization. If they have uncomplicated disease, but the patient has one or more of the following characteristics, sepsis, microperforation or phlegmon, high fever greater than 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit and 39 degrees Celsius, significant leukocytosis, severe abdominal pain or diffuse peritonitis, age greater than 70, or if outpatient treatment failed. So how should I manage these patients? The management of uncomplicated diverticulitis is initially medical. It involves administration of intravenous antibiotics converted to oral antibiotics once an oral diet is tolerated. The antibiotics should cover against gram-negative rods and anaerobic organisms. Management should also include bowel rest with nothing given per mouth. Intravenous fluid resuscitation as these patients can be greatly dehydrated. Serial abdominal exams, and minimally invasive treatment of complications of the disease. For example, a diverticular abscess can be drained percutaneously by interventional radiology. Surgery is usually indicated for patients with significant obstruction, bleeding, or infection from complicated disease. A surgical consult should be obtained if the patient is suspected to have complicated disease or if the patient has had multiple episodes of diverticulitis. After non-operative management of acute diverticulitis, patients have a 16-42% to 42% chance of developing recurrent diverticulitis. Elective surgical resection of the segment of bowel with diverticulitis should be considered and all options discussed with the surgeon. Colonoscopy is not routinely used in establishing the diagnosis of acute diverticulitis and should be avoided during the acute disease process due to risk of perforation during the procedure. After the complete resolution of symptoms associated with acute diverticulitis, typically in six to eight weeks, a colonoscopy is performed to exclude an underlying malignancy, especially in older patients with whom the risk is greater. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.